Hello everyone, welcome back to Ray Zero Space and Kerbal Space Program 2, where I'm trying out the new 5 meter cargo bay parts that they add to the game compared to KSP-1. You may have seen them in a preview video. And the only thing I want to do with them is to make a cargo space plane with the cargo at the top or at the front, depending on your point of view. And so that is what I've done. You could make a launcher with them, of course, a regular launcher without wings, and try and bring it down. But I figure that this is probably the better arrangement. But it does present some complications because we have a fairly hollow uh, front end. And so the center of mass and center of lift basically have to stay right back here. And we'll see how well balanced it is with the canards up front. I checked it out without any cargo, without the boosters, etc. The way it would come back without any fuel and placed the aerodynamic surfaces like that. But I'm not entirely sure it's right. I will have to see when we test re-entry. And I have not tested re-entry re with it yet. I did test launch with it already and had to make some tweaks. In particular, I didn't realize that the big control core that we have here, uh, right there, does not have a reaction wheel. And that was an important piece of information. You can see the small one has a reaction wheel. The Mark II one has a reaction wheel. This one has a reaction wheel. But neither of the two really big ones have a reaction wheel. So I thought they should have a really huge reaction wheel, but no. So having discovered that, we uh, needed to put a reaction wheel here. And I have not tested launch with that. So the reaction wheel is there and that is additional mass. We're also trying to carry up 53 tons of cargo. And there's no crossfeed on these docking ports. So we're hoping to deliver that to orbit. Actually, it's 52.875. It's a normal orange tank, 36 tons, plus this adapter, which is 18, uh, sorry, 16.875 tons or something like that. So that's the cargo we're lifting up. Well, I guess if you throw in the docking port, it's a little bit more than uh, that. So anyway, 53 tons to orbit. We have at the bottom, so this is the tank here, and then we have at the bottom a Rhino engine. I decided that I wanted as few engines as possible, and the reason for that is the plumes seem to create lag. So, one engine it is, and then we have the Clydesdale boosters. I also have a tiny little puff engine for orbital maneuvers as necessary. May or may not be a good idea, we'll see. And you can see the mop propellant tanks for the RCS system as well as the puff. So, that is the layout of it. I've called it the Clipper, and we'll see whether it works. Again, some changes have been made since the last launch attempt, attempt so we'll see if they work out for us. And re-entry is a complete unknown. Uh, well, the fact that it's bouncing on the pad doesn't really offer me much hope. Um, we do have struts, right? Oh, I think the struts disconnected. Let me reconnect the struts. Okay, now with better strutting, and it is stable, so let's get started. Now, there's a catch here. We've underfueled the core tank because the Rhino engine doesn't have that much thrust. And we basically need to launch straight up with the boosters, because otherwise the Rhino will not have enough thrust to weight ratio. So, is this an efficient sort of situation? I don't know. It sort of depends on the, on the cost efficiency. We decided on the Clydesdales because they are solid rocket motors and presumably when we get career mode they'll be cheap. And of course we're disposing of them, they're not recoverable. But the Rhino engine, well it depends on whether it is cheap or not compared to other engine options. And of course once the lag on the plumes is reduced that might change things as well. We might want more engines on the core. There's space for it, you know. We can manage that if necessary. I'm not wedded to using the Rhino necessarily, though it looks good. It's a nice looking engine. For now though, that necessitates this sort of launch. Straight up first. Give us some time to wap waps this. Maybe a little bit of tilt I'll start here. Okay, booster separation. And off they go. I did add Separatrons, so they go off cleanly. And you can see us losing speed with the Rhino, but it'll be alright. We could also try to make it a pure recoverable launcher without the Clydesdales with different engines.
But I thought this would be fun. We do have to make sure that it doesn't drain the payload tanks, and it doesn't seem to be right now. We're trying for a 100 kilometer by 100 kilometer orbit. Still got some accelerating to go though. And shut down. Ah, oh, not quite shutting down. I should have just thrall down. I always forget that these things can thrall down. But uh, 105 kilometers by nearly 100. We have 308 meters per second left. And let's try and roll here. And then we'll deploy the payload after saving. On the launch attempt, I didn't realize that this thing didn't have a uh, reaction wheel. I launched like that. We got to orbit, but then I wasn't able to move without the RCS on. And then I realized, so I decided we should probably put a reaction wheel. This is not realism overhaul right now. I'll open up the front end too. I used docking ports because, at least with the shuttle, it seemed safer, so I decided that this would be a better idea. Undock RCS on and moving away. You have to do this quickly because otherwise the docking ports will dock back together. Okay, it is clear. Now, I'm not going to risk time warping in its presence. For safety's sake, we are going to boost away and then we'll bring our orbit back down again. We're just in an equatorial orbit, so... Okay. Okay, I think we're alright. I'm gonna bring my orbit back down to the usual standby orbit. I think I'll try out the puff engine. Okay. Puff engine is firing. I have no idea how much Delta V it actually has. Whether here or in the VAB, it never showed me. <laughs> but it's got 2.4 tons of mod propellant altogether. Yep, looking nice now. The puff is doing its job. Well, the periapsis is going down. I'll fix that. Okay, we'll come down on this orbit, and I think I'll just go with what we've done with the shuttle, though this is obviously nothing like the shuttle. And we'll just see how that works out for us. So right about here we'll retrograde. Oh, we'll retroburn, sorry. We are going retrograde and we will retroburn. We'll use both the puff and the main engine. I do not expect that this has the exquisite balance of the shuttle. And I anticipate that we are going to need to make adjustments to the wing placement. Okay. Basically the same idea. I'll turn the main engine off now. It doesn't have much left anyway. Okay, let's see how it does. The clipper. I don't know why I called it that. Uh, except, I guess the rhino's clipping in a bit. But there's not a whole lot of clipping otherwise. It's interesting because the center mass is all the way back here. In fact, uh, in the VAB, the center mass is, was where I put those RCS ports. And so the camera is focused right there. Oh boy. Uh, it's getting a little bit weird. Uh, it's getting a little bit weird to handle. Uh-oh. 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 Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, it's... Uh... Its center of lift must be forward, too far forward. I mean, the canard is huge. And uh, in the VAB, it showed that the center of lift was behind and everything. But clearly, it's no longer the case or something. I don't know. I didn't want to make the canard that big, but the center of lift was hanging out really far behind. So I decided I had no choice. But clearly, I have been misled. Well, the mod propellant is in the tail, so if we dump it, maybe we will be able to move the center of mass forward and fix this. We don't have a whole lot of time to make that theory happen, though. 
Well, I'll just have SAS try to get to prograde eventually. Looks like we're coming in like a traditional launcher. We should have just landed on our tail to begin with. I was thinking of putting jet engines in the tail, but obviously that wouldn't help in this situation. It would just make things worse. But yeah, reducing the size of the canards is definitely high on the to-do list right now. Well, let's get the landing gear out and see what happens. Come on. It's going very tail first. This is very interesting right now. Look at this. Um, we're gaining altitude right now. We're gaining altitude. Oh, wait, wait. Maybe we can regain prograde. Okay. Pulling up. Trying to pull up anyway. Um, there's been some magic. <laughs> there's been some magic, like anti-kraken or something, whatever you want to call it. We have been the recipient of certain blessings that we did not deserve. Maybe dumping the mob propellant helped, I don't know. But it sure helped at the last minute. I guess in certain flight conditions this thing is aerodynamically stable. Oh, like right at the end there. <laughs> right at the end there the center mass and center lift were what the VAB said they were. Just nowhere before that. I'm trying to press brakes too, these aren't working. Uh, the B and all, the normal keys for some reason. Okay, mysterious things have happened, what can I say? But there you have it, that's the clipper. Uh, we'll figure out whether it really works or not later on, but I'll probably still make adjustments. Much testing will be required, and hopefully in more consistent conditions. But that's the idea anyway. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.